Hey everybody and welcome back for another episode of This Old House. I'm... No, that's not right. Welcome back for day three of our super rusty old 17 year old GMC Sierra 1500 SLE catastrophic crazy brake replacement series. All right, it's become a series. That's how long we're doing this. And I probably could have broken up previous episodes into three and four each. <laughs> All right, we're, we're talking long videos here, but I hope you guys are enjoying it. And I hope you're joining me through this trying time of uh, getting these brakes done on this old truck. All right, I am a novice at spinning a wrench. Definitely not a trained mechanic in any way, shape, or form. So do not take what I do as being the proper way of doing anything. All right, today, if you caught the uh, last video, I left the driver's side front brakes in a state of uh, limbo. Yeah, in limbo, okay? And basically, I need to remove the slider pins and went to Napa today, of course. First thing out of the bunk. And look at what I got. New sliders. And they have a bolt head pattern instead of that insert expletive here, Torx head screw um, tightening surface, we'll say. All right. The, uh, the Torx head have, have not been working in our favor this whole time. Actually, it's been working against us. All right. At every step of the way, when we encounter a Torx head slider pin, we've had trouble. So uh, I got those replacements there ready to go. So I just got to remove the old ones, get these greased up, slide them in their place, tighten everything down, and I'm ready to bleed the brakes. Uh, bleeding the brakes may take a little bit for me. Now, for you guys, it'll be, you know, pretty instantaneous when we get to it. But my wife is currently off with the kids at a uh, at a birthday party. So when she gets home, then I'll have my helper here to bleed the brakes like we did in the last video. All right, so that's about it. That's where we're resuming today is the slider pins first. And then I got to make sure to tighten everything down. Uh, overnight... I tell you, I was up late. I'm always up late. Uh, I was thinking and thinking. I wanted to come out in the garage. I wanted to shine a light on those calipers and check for drips and check for leaks. And I had it in my head. I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out there tomorrow to an empty reservoir tank. The whole system's going to be bled dry. And I'm going to be in a lot of trouble trying to bleed a whole brake system. Thankfully, that did not occur. There were no leaks overnight. So I am confident that the connections are all good for now, at least. Um, so we'll carry on. I do have to do that bit of bleeding like I said and that bleeder screw took a little bit of extra tightening yesterday so hopefully it's up to the task of being tightened that tight again a second time. Alright so that's about it. I'll bring you guys down to the brake system there now and we'll get those sliders replaced. Should be fairly quick but I've been proven wrong so many times this project on how I think it's going to go versus how reality plays out that uh, I'm prepared for anything at this point really all right uh, so if you haven't already all right we're, we're pretty far into this project time wise progress wise uh, is, is debatable but please go back and watch the previous two parts uh, to this series if you're if you're not up to here already I honestly have to suggest that you go back start over with this series and that'll bring you up to speed where we are, what we've been through, uh, why we're doing all this, what this truck has been doing to me lately. All that stuff is included in the previous two videos. So please stop here if you haven't watched those previous two already. Go back, watch them at your leisure, come back, and this one will be waiting for you to finish off and uh, continue on. Alright, so with all that said, bring you down to the brake system now. We'll get these slider pins in. And then I'll wait for my wife to get home. We'll do some uh, bleeding of this caliper. And we should be good to put everything back together and road test it. Alright, here we go. 
All right, everybody, let's get going. So first thing on the agenda, get the old sliders out. Now I put them in very loosely at the end of the last video. Uh, I never snugged them down at all, just, just kind of put them in almost flush. So they should be easy to remove. But I'm kind of interested to see how uh, our luck is going to start off today. If they're still loose or if they've uh, magically seized on there. That one's loose. And that one's loose. Lovely. So I'm going to just do one at a time. I'll, uh, I'll start with the top one actually. These only unscrew so far, and then it's pretty much pull it out. All right, there's only a couple of centimeters of, of tread on it, and then it's free. Okay, so that one is loose. Now I'm going to go to my new box of parts. One of these puppies out. One thing I never figured out was that in this slider pack they have these two black, almost like they're spacers, and I have no idea where they would go. Like the the pins that are coming out, there's no spacer at the end of them or anything when they come out. So unless this is down inside the boot and was uh, reinstalled during the caliper refurbish. So I'm not sure why they would include these in the pack if they're already taken care of. Like I say, my only assumption could be that there's some kind of a spacer or some kind of landing pad inside the caliper for these for these sliders, right? Because by the looks of it, you would think they would go on like that. Alright, let me get to show you guys. So like I'm thinking that this part is probably down inside the caliper, but I don't know because when I remove the sliders, I never seen any black pieces like that. But it looks like it would go there, doesn't it? Anyways, I'm not sure. Hopefully they got the uh, hopefully they got everything right with the model of uh, vehicle they put in for this time. So I'll take that off and I'll lay that aside. I even asked the guy at Napa, I said, do you know what these are for? <laughs> he said, nope. So, that's it. Is what it is. We're going to continue on. Here's our new slider. Love this. Love that. I should uh, grab a socket and just see. Yeah, it's an 18. 18 for that. Alright, so let's uh, throw a bit of grease on that. I'm just going to do the length of the slider, a little bit, not a big amount. And actually, I'm going to do the other one just because I want to keep my gloves clean. So for that reason, I'm going to use the second slider to spread the grease over both. All right, and I'm just going to take them kind of like that and just kind of smear it around. Another option is when you're inserting the slide pins you can uh, just kind of twist and rotate them as you're inserting them, which I do anyways, but you could use that as a way to spread your grease and uh, as well this is a silicone based product. Let's see if I can show you here. All right, synthetic dielectric grease uh, lubricant for, oh that's French, it's a brake, brake lubricant anyways, and easy slide, I've made by Clean Flow. Alright, no, uh, no affiliation whatsoever, just letting you know what I'm using. Alright, so let's get these greasy, lay one aside, and, <laughs> that was a nice sound, that was a nice sound. Hopefully you guys caught that. Alright, and 
keeping it centralized. In it goes. And no trouble to start the, the threads on that. All right, next. Get this bottom one out. Get this wretched beast out of my caliper. Dirty, dirty Torx heads. All right, that's that one. There's the new. Right, lift the caliper a little bit. threads are started on that one. So at this point I can swap out my bits. I should not need an extension. Let's put an 18 on here. I'll probably still do a little bit more with my fingers here before I use that. To that point of this one. Make sure you're paying close attention to the boots on your calipers. They're in different places on different calipers, but usually just on the uh, inside of the slider part there. Uh, make sure your boot is fully pressed against both ends of where it's covering so that dirt and debris cannot get inside that boot and uh, water as well because that'll cause corrosion and sticky sliders which results in sticky brakes. So I got everything done in place. Uh, it just needs to be cranked down, which I'll do now in a second. Um, let's see if I can get a good angle at this. Um, where should I start? I'm going to start with the bracket, which needs an extension. Now I keep saying saddle for the bracket. I think I'm right based on what I've seen, but uh, you know. The saddle, the two main bolts that hold that on to the hub are, is what I'm going for. And I'll go under this brake line to get there. And that's on. And now give it a good, give it a good going over. Oh, I think I put that one on tight already. One down bottom. I might have got an eighth of a turn on that. All right, next sliders that we just put in. Now, no, I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that you don't need to crank crank them, but you know, make sure they're tight. Actually, I'm gonna take the extension off now. I don't want that wobbling around. One of these fresh, fresh slider pins. one on here. Alright. There we are. New slide pins are installed. Everything else is good. Just need to bleed it now. Alright, so it's at this point in time that I get to take a break, even though I literally just replaced two bolts pretty much. So not like I need a big break, but my wife still isn't home. So I need to wait for her and then I'll get back and bleed this and we'll be ready to put the tire back on once that's bled. Alright, so we'll be right back with you and we'll continue with the project. Okay, so my wife is now home. She's in the driver's side there again. 
same as last video, we're going to be bleeding these brakes now. So I'm going to get her to pump them up. Alright, and hold. And then I'm going to be loosening. Keep holding them. There we go. Okay, release. Pump them up. Now, I don't know if you guys heard that little squeaky bit of air. That's the air that's been migrating overnight, getting up there ready to come out. Alright, hold. Alright, here we go, another. Another bleed. I'm watching, kind of creating a little pool around the bleeder nipple. So if a bubble of air comes out, I can see it. Okay, pump it up. Hold. Hear that air? Okay, pump it up. And hold. Take a breather. I need to get some shop towels down on the floor and the swimming pool of brake fluid we've created. But as you can tell so far we're still getting those squeaky air bubbles coming out. And I think it's quiet enough here that you're able to hear it. So if you didn't hear it, probably just go back a minute or so and listen again. You'll hear the air escaping. So if that air were to stay inside the caliper and the brakes heat up, that air can create a space of expanding air or it uh, can actually kind of make your brake fluid bubble, I believe. I could be wrong on that part. But basically you get a squishy pedal and you can get brake failure because all you're pushing on is air and air is much more compressible than brake fluid. So you're, you're losing your brakes when they heat up if you leave that air in there. All right, let's try this off. All right, pump them up. And hold. All right, listen tight, close. Okay, pump them up. So no air that time, maybe one little bubble. Okay, hold. Still some air coming. All right, pump it up. Hold. Okay, pump it up. And take a breather. So once you're losing this much brake fluid, I got a big brake fluid reservoir in the truck, so I'm not too worried about running out quickly. But cars can have a really small brake reservoir, so you want to be uh, checking your fluid level. And I can just thankfully stand up here, have a look, and we're still above three quarters. So. We're still well in the area we want to be. All right, so now we'll do another run, pump them up. All right, hold. All right, pump them up. And that's it. 
you're good. So that time there was no squeaky bubbles, any of that stuff. It was just straight to the fluid right away. So I am satisfied that this is adequately bled. So now it's just a matter of getting this bleed screw tight enough so that it's not leaking. I'll try about there. I'm going to get my parts cleaner, clean this up, change my gloves, and we should be ready to put the wheel back on. Alright, so I'll, uh, I'm just going to change these gloves, we'll zoom out, and I'll show you cleaning this up, and we'll go from there. Alright everybody, so clean up time. I got my clean flow, clean flow 313. This is uh, Napa's uh, affordable brake parts cleaner, and it's uh, three bucks a can here in in Newfoundland, Canada. So probably uh, cheaper for those of you in the U.S. of A. I assume you guys have Napa down there, but uh, anyways, brake parts cleaner. I'm gonna give this a good dousing, get all that brake fluid off of the caliper that we just put on, and so far no leaking from the bleeder nipple or from the banjo fitting which I never touched and that never leaked all night so that should be fine so I'll just give this a good dousing now you guys got a good ear full of birds outside right now and uh, those are birds that we've been uh, having move into our well house so they're all out just there in the driveway kicking around alright so let's clean this up now It's a healthy dosing, don't you think? At three bucks a can, why not? Why not use half a can on one caliper? Just as well. Keep in mind, brake parts cleaner is very flammable. I have seen, uh, I've seen one mechanic, I forget his channel name now, he, uh, he used it as a, a pre fluid spray or like a ah, starting spray right sprayed it right into the cylinder and ran a Corvette off of it for probably 10 seconds or so off a little spray <laughs> it was uh, it was interesting for sure to see the brake brake part cleaner could be used for that purpose so I wish I could remember I think it's like South Main Auto LLC is the name of his channel. Really good guy. Really cool. Uh, really cool videos. That's how uh, I've been doing a lot of my research lately on doing some of this work. Is watching his videos. And he, uh, very positive guy. He uh, pretty much says at the end of his videos, says if I can do it, so can you. So you know what. For those of us doing these types of jobs, especially this old rusty one that I've been into, sometimes you kind of want to hear that. That, you know what, if I can do it, so can you. And it goes for me with you guys. Like I, I'm not a mechanic. Right? You see what I'm going through, but persistence is paying off so far. And I try to teach my kids that. It's practice, practice, practice. Persistence, persistence, persistence. All right, so... Uh, so kids, if you're watching this in the future, I hope I taught you right. I hope you paid attention. Because I highly doubt my kids at their age now are going to sit down and watch a video of their old man doing uh, a brake job. But, they probably would all the same. They're awesome kids. Alright. So that is cleaned up. I'm going to put you guys on pause, or just stop you for now, and uh, keep an eye around here now. Make sure that bleeder valve does not leak. And at that point in time, we're ready to get the wheel back on. 
Alright, I'm not seeing anything. I tightened down the sliders, I tightened down the saddle bracket bolts, the banjo fitting is tight and non-leaking, the bleeder valve is not leaking so far, pads are in, oriented the right way, calipers on, pistons working as seen with my wife when priming the brakes, hub's been lubricated and part cleaned and all that good stuff, part cleaner on everything. So I think our checklist is pretty much complete and I'm ready to get a wheel back on here. Right. Um, so, so far so good in terms of not having to get the flex lines done right away. Right. There's no slow leak going on. And uh, I'm actually going to go over and have another look at the other caliper while I got, got you guys paused. But, um, you know, no leaks so far so I, sh I may be able to go a while without getting those flex lines immediately, right? At least a couple of weeks till the next check, that type of deal. Um, but yeah, so. Or, you know, you guys can make my channel go viral and then uh, get revenue coming in and, I, and we can go wild with this truck. We can, make, we can make this into a Napa truck. I don't care, we'll replace every part in it. You guys are footing the bill. But, as long as I'm footing the bill, <laughs> And my wife's footing the bill along with me, and I need to keep her from leaving me. That means I gotta kinda try and tailor the spending to the necessities and not the desires. So, uh, yeah, there's your little ramble on life happenings. Okay, so I'll put you guys on pause. I'm gonna watch that bleeder nipple, make sure it doesn't leak. If all things are copacetic and wonderful, We'll come back here, get the tire put on, and uh, I think it's pretty much time for a road test after that. Alright, let's uh, be right back in a second to you guys. Oh, one more thing, one more thing, sorry. I, I told you we were gone. Alright, you know what happens when you bleed your brakes with your socket set? As you saw, brake fluid was squirting out of this release button and everything. Do you know what you can do to help get it back into uh, normal condition, we'll say? More brake parts cleaner. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to lay it down there and give it a good dosing. Turn it over. Give it another dosing. Spray it down where the brake flow was. Let it drip out of that button. And there we are. And I'll probably do that with most of my tools that I've used in this project because I got everything filthy. Like absolutely filthy, full of brake fluid, full of grease, beat apart with a hammer, all that good stuff. Anyways, look at me rambling again. It's too easy. It's too easy for me to ramble. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At least you're not getting a, a monotone, speechless video, right? Okay. Be right back. And just like that, folks, with the magic of movie making, we are back. And it's been, I want to say, 15, 20 minutes since I last spoke to you in my time, but a matter of seconds for you guys. All right, so since I've been gone, there has been no leaking from the bleeder. So we are good there. So overall, this is complete, ready for a wheel back on there. And that's what we're going to get to next. As well, while we were gone, I double checked my YouTube and the the YouTuber I was talking about is South Main Auto Repair LLC. Alright, and this guy's been putting out videos for years, got a big uh, following, and his videos have definitely been very useful and very valuable to, like I say, keep me motivated learning skills that he's using, all that good stuff. So uh, if you guys want, uh, I'd appreciate it if you're watching this, go over to South Main Auto Repair LLC's channel, find their most recent video, and uh, just comment on, on it. Say you're here and, and a Being Mansome sent you his way, and uh, just let him know that we appreciate his uh, videos, his skills as a mechanic and uh, definitely some good lessons there in persistence and patience and uh, problem solving. Right, so like I just brought up my home page on YouTube 
and I've been binge watching him so much that it's starting to take over my home page, right? And I, I thought it funny. I'm just going to play a little audio clip and video clip of the beginning of this video and how appropriate it was to uh, our video, what was it, last video? It might have been the first video, to be honest, with in this series. Listen. Okay, so we've got a rusty bleeder with lots of other rust. Uh, so we just got done putting some brake lines on this old Chevy, and uh, we're going to attempt to get the bleeder out, and a method we're going to use, uh, this one's still got a little nub sticking out, the other side's gone. Uh, we're going to clamp on it, we're going to heat it up, see if we can get it out with just heat. All right, so that's just an example. I believe I'm able to use other people's content up to a maximum of like 30 seconds before getting into any kind of uh, conflict with fair use. So I, I think we're safe to show you that little clip. Um, but yeah, great channel. I've just been binge watching him like crazy lately. Uh, you name it, broken coil springs to broken axles and uh, from trucks to Civics to Corvette. Um, all kinds of, of goodies, alright, like that, and uh, I definitely suggest it to you guys. If, like I say, if you're here watching this video right now, I don't know how many of you uh, are regular viewers of mine, or if you're just here for the automotive uh, content, anyways, if you haven't discovered this guy, and you're into the automotive content, I would definitely point you that in that direction, which I have. Alright, so with all that said, I'm going to straighten out the wheels here, and uh, and let's get the wheel back on here. Alright, let's go. Okay, we are back. Now, while we were off camera, I brought the tire over, held it up against the axle, and it looks like we should be able to just kind of scooch it along the floor and get it onto the studs, no problem. So hopefully that follows through, and let's find out. As well, I looked at the passenger side again, the caliper over there, and no leaks. All good. Alright, so with that, with that said, one last look at things. Confirm everything is the way you want it, the way it's supposed to be. And let's, let's scooch. Let's scooch this on. <laughs> Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Looking good. Good looking. All right. Here's our little dish of lug nuts. And air hammer. Let's get that hooked up. Alright. Put it in the forward direction. Since we've been using reverse so darn much on these Torx heads sliders, with no success, <laughs> and finally put it into forward success mode. Let's get these started. Pretty straightforward, obviously. Put them back where you got them. There we are. 
tire is back on, thankfully. Ah. Oh, that with my foot. All right, so same deal that I did with the other side there, checking smoothness. Just that little sound of new pads on new rotors with little clearance since they're not worn away yet. All right, looks good to me. All right, it's time to get this baby down off the jack stands and uh, start getting things prepared to take it on a little road test. And But first it'll be a, a driveway test because I don't want to just go pulling onto a main road and not have brakes. But I, I assumed that this all worked. All right, this is the way it should be. And uh, calipers were squeezing on the rotor when my wife was here and we were bleeding the, the calipers. So I think we'll be okay. So I'll get this down, get these torqued. And uh, I got to boost the truck actually. I left the key when I first turned it forward to turn the wheels on that other wheel. Well, I kept the key forward a little bit the whole time <laughs> that I was working and uh, drained the battery. So I'll be boosting this baby to get her going again, but that's yet to come. All right, let's get her down. There we go, this one side down. That's a nice sight to see. All right, let's get that driver's side wheel torqued down now. All right, so this is the same deal as last video, okay? 140 foot pounds. And this time I'm going to try and remember what ones I did. See if, try not to show my age. My, uh, my air hammer set, from what I've done with tire changes in the past, my little system puts at about 90 foot pounds of torque onto a nut. And that's at full compression. Obviously, as the tank empties out, I lose power in my air hammer. I do have plans to upgrade the compressor at some point in time, but it's just not in the carriage right now. So uh, in case you're wondering, it's only, I think it's an eight gallon, eight gallon tank. It's only small for little small jobs and it's always recharging. Um, what else? I have one other thing I wanted to tell you guys. Remember, like I was using so much brake park cleaner? Make sure you are 
separating flammable products from your garbage. Don't just throw everything into the garbage, including the brake parts cleaner soaked rags. All right, last thing you want to do is that get in some kind of chemical reaction and, and self-combust or spontaneously combust in your garbage and burn your shop down. So uh, have a fire safe container or, you know, find another way of disposing it. Let's leave it at that. See, we're at 140 and I only went a little ways with that. So my air hammer did a pretty good job this time, probably around 100. What is coming up the road? That was somebody wheeling a dirt bike up the road. It's pretty good. Play a green Kawasaki. I'm just gonna go over all these one more time. Also, if you're new to this channel, I'll let you know we do lots of stuff here. I try to, anyways. Gardening, we got chickens. We're trying to expand on our uh, animal collection, we'll say that. We currently have uh, a lot of projects in the works. I'm probably going to end up doing these lugs like three or four times because I'm talking to you. But uh, yeah, if you haven't already, it'd be great if you subscribed and rang notification bell whatever hoops YouTube wants you to jump through these days to support a channel that would be awesome All right, we do family vlogs projects builds you know mixture of things alright so they're all torqued to 140 foot-pounds Putting on my hubcap, there is a little rounded edge here that you got to match up in the slot. And there we are. She's on. She's ready. Time to boost the truck and get it out of this garage, I guess. See what happens. All right, let's. Uh, I'll get the booster pack now, and and we can boost it together for uh, for what it's worth. Let's do that. Alright, so before I jump right into boosting it, I'm just going to do a quick little Hail Mary, see if there's enough juice in there to get her started. I got my doubts, I don't even think she'll crank over. And uh, the reason for that is because when my wife was here bleeding the brakes, we tried to put the windows down, and that's when we noticed it was dead. So I'm sure this is going to be a fail attempt, but I want to try it. Here goes nothing. No go. Alright, so obviously she's dead. Uh, I'll get the booster pack now out of the corner. And we'll get that hooked up to the battery. Alright, so what I'm using here is 
just a Motomaster Eliminator 700 watt booster pack. I use this for various things around the land here. Sometimes I plug my uh, video camera into it when the battery is dying out because my video camera is so old. And uh, it helps me get some outdoor footage. Alright, so I'm going to get the leads put on. So I'm just going to do uh, straight up to the battery. The only thing is finding a spot to lay this booster pack. On top of there we'll have to do. Because you get a picture of this, I'm going to be inside the cab. So wherever I lay this booster pack, at the vibration of the engine or anything, could make it fall. So hopefully not. They're not very big terminals that I'm attached to. The button over on the side. There we are. Turned on the juice. So she should be boosting right now. That seems sturdy enough. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, attempt to start. She's not ready just yet, or I got a bad connection. Let me see. The green light says that I have a correct connection. She might just need a couple of minutes to take the charge a little bit. Alright, we got some sparkage there. Alright, hopefully we're not into something else here altogether. off the booster leads. Take, uh, what am I taking off first? Negative off. Obviously the alternator is good. No running issues with no charge. Right, let's get this out of the way. Looking at my brake fluid reservoir cap, that is on. All right, I don't have anything else here, no nuts or bolts laid up in the windshield. That's good, brake fluid level is great. Everything is all good. All right, time to take it out in the, in the driveway and see if we got brakes. That went well, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll grab you guys and we'll jump in the cab and go for a little spin. All right, let's go. All right, boys and girls, we are out driving, and if you watch outside, you can tell my speed somewhat. Uh, you can tell if I'm going or stopped. So, so now I'm going to apply the brakes. Oh yeah. I first, when I first started in my driveway. Uh, putting on the brakes, they were still slippery, and I, I know I've heard before about uh, burnishing the brakes, I think, or breaking them in pretty much. And you got to break in your pads a bit as well until they really get a good seal on the rotor and give you good braking. Oh, yeah, but I can tell already, braking is amazing. And that's only with two done out of four, all right? Keep that in mind. We're not done yet, we got the rears to do. Uh, 
this. And uh, I can jam the pedal to the floor. She won't lock up and she won't kick in the ABS. So I think there's still like, more braking power to be unleashed when the pads are broken properly in the rotors. But I don't want to heat them up too quickly. I still got brakes though. Really good brakes so far. Break a bit hard now. I might need to hold on to you. Here we go. She didn't lock up or anything. She kept. It's kind of a soft, soft stop. And we didn't stop. I'm on a. I'm on a kind of the main road here. So yeah, it's uh, so far so good. I need to do a little bit more heavy braking just to get these pads and rotors heated up and burnished. And so I'm. Uh, I'm looking in my rear view, making sure that there's not uh, not anyone behind me. You know, I don't want to be that guy who's ahead doing brake checks. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a big difference right there. They're getting broke in. I can tell they're getting broke in. All right, let's keep on going. Going down a somewhat steep hill here now, so I'm putting my trust in my work. I'm not going to go too crazy, but I'm not going to go flying up to the intersection or anything. Brakes feel good. They feel good. I got a feeling they're going to be even better when I get the uh, the rears done, because this, it could be in my head, but I do feel that extra bite on the front. That's what I'm feeling. I can definitely feel an extra bite. Sorry, tipped you a little bit there with the sudden takeoff. You still see me? Yeah, you still see me. That's good. So yeah, we're just doing a quick little, let's do like some easy braking. I'll do a bit of hard braking. Just get them scuffed, get them worn into the surface of the rotor, you know. They got that kind of that shape to them that needs to be molded. Take a couple of layers off and flatten them right onto the rotor properly. Oh, yeah. So far so good, boys and girls. The work is paying off. The work is paying off. And I also, before I left for this drive, uh, in between takes there, I, uh, I also looked at the calipers, make sure it wasn't any leaking or anything there. Because at first my pedal was a bit squishy. And I've heard before the GMCs and Chevys kind of got of a, a long brake pedal travel anyways. So it never concerned me. And since going it's kind of tightened up a bit anyways. Right, so but I, I am getting quick engagement. Right? I only gotta push it down an inch or so and I start to feel the braking force so that's good that's a sign that uh, that there is good brake control and it could just be that the, the GMC system is just designed to have that progressive soft pedal but uh, I definitely did have some moments where it's like I put it right to the floor and she was still moving forwards. Now I got someone behind me there now, so I can't uh, I can't go brake checking them. But uh, you know, everything is good. Everything is real good. I got good brakes, good stopping power. I can feel that bite up front, like I said. And overall, I'm feeling really good. I'm I'm thinking it's a I'm thinking there's definitely a wear in period. And I've heard that terminology before, the burnishing, is it burnishing? I think it's burnishing, pretty much heat them up, get that uh, that exhaust like rainbow on them, or just get the heat into them, get the pads heated up, so I'm, uh, I'm just looking around now for a place to go where I can really give it a bit more gusto and jam on the brakes, you know. 
there's still an SUV behind me. And I'm sure they would not appreciate me jamming on the brakes. I was going to make a, a sad joke that, that if he wasn't ready for my braking, I might have a way to pay for the truck renewal. But no, I, I kid, I kid. Just a, that was just a poor thought came in my head. Alright, so, uh, yeah, so far so good. You may see a couple of time cuts during this video, during the driving period, because as of right now, I'm not actually doing anything. I'm not even braking. I'm just driving like normal, so. As long as I'm chatting with you guys, then I'll, I'll keep that footage in there and, uh, and include that, since it's not just a video of somebody driving, which it kind of is, but you know what I mean. But I'm excited. I'm excited to get the rear brakes done and see you like what kind of stopping force I have then. I, I would almost prefer that if I jam it to the floor that the tires would lock up and the ABS would kick in and, and do a controlled stop that way. But instead right now I'm just getting a progressive slowing. So like if I locked it up the wheels aren't going to just stop. And I'd rather rely on my wheels for grip to stop than on the brakes, but I'm being realistic. I know I'm still braking in the pads, braking in the rotors, so I'm uh, I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself here. I got good brakes. I got good brakes. They're working. They're grippy. Yeah, let's make sure there's no one behind me. Hold on to you guys. I'm going to put them right to the floor. I think I, I heard a little scuff. A little, I think I heard a little, a little little tiny bit of the tire. I never got no ABS though. I never got any ABS. I need, a, I need another area. Oh man. The brakes are getting better. They're getting better with time, I swear. It might be in my head. It might be like self-fulfilling here. But uh, we'll see. Oh yeah, they're good. They're good boys and girls. They're good. So yeah, this is a great, great test drive here now. I can tell you with absolute certainty now at this point in time. I, got, I can tell you with certainty that you're looking up at the ceiling a bit there, aren't you? I'm after knocking you around a little bit with my heavy braking. Alright, but um, awesome. The brakes are, it's like the brakes are maturing minute by minute and getting grippier and grippier. Alright, so we are golden. We are 100% on point. I so say I'm doing some heavy braking right to the floor. Uh, and for that reason I'm going to check the calipers and, ble and bleeder nipples when I get home to make sure that we haven't uh, loosened anything or over pressurized something to the point of a leak again. So I'll do that, uh, I'll just do that off camera because with the tires and everything back on now it involves me lying on the ground with the, t with the wheel turned all the way to full lock. and. Uh, easier for me to just do that myself off camera and, uh, and give you guys the feedback but, but holy moly what a difference I need I think I showed you already like a decent stop but they've matured even more I think like like this is crazy haven't and I haven't even done the back yet this is crazy and the back are discs so you know, they're actually going to have a bit of braking force. Right? It ain't no uh, no drums, that's for sure. So, I tell you, it's feeling good. It's feeling real good. Real good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Alright, so, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. I will uh, cut you guys off now. We did some hard braking, and I'm doing hard braking on and off camera. Pretty much.
touch. Uh, I am so satisfied. So satisfied. So. All right. I will see you guys back at the garage or the driveway, wherever we end up. All right. I'll see you there. And just like that, I'm back in the garage. Test drive is done. Test drive was awesome. Check the calipers when I got home. No leaks. All good. The rotors, they look spectacular. They look burnished, I guess. That's the word. Uh, they definitely look broken. Performance increased with time during the test drive. Uh, I kind of think that maybe uh, garages and stuff, when they do full brake changes like that, Maybe they send somebody out to burnish the rotors so that when the, the client comes back they feel the full braking power right away. I, I bet you that's a little trade secret or not so secret depending on where you search online. Alright, uh, as you can tell the truck is not in the garage right now but next time you see that truck well, I can't really say that because I might have another video in between but anyways, next time you see the truck in this garage it should be front in with the rear towards the back towards the front door and uh, we'll be starting work on the rear brakes as for today I don't have time uh, we're getting up there in in time anyways I got over an hour of footage so I gotta go through and edit together for you guys and uh, so this video will be a short one okay uh, but the series is not over do not mistake it we are not done just because the truck is now in drivable condition and I can use it uh, it does not mean that we're done. Okay, so uh, so don't worry about that. We got the rear brakes to do. I got the pads and rotors over there. I am hoping, hoping I don't need to go replace any any calipers on the rear. Uh, we'll see when we get there. Just from a quick eye inspection through the wheel spokes or spokes, um, the calipers look like they're relatively in good condition. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't think there's anything else for this video in particular. Uh, when we get back to this series, we will be doing those rear brakes. But uh, the kids are due home soon. My wife's going to work, so I'm going to have to watch after some kiddos. And uh, cannot be out here playing in the garage as I had first intended. But this hasn't really been playing much during this series, that's for sure. Alright, so with that said, I think I've said everything I wanted to tell you guys throughout the video in those little rambles and um, yeah so subscribe ring the notification bell like this video if you like excuse me <laughs> if you liked it don't like a video if you didn't like it obviously um, and uh, drop a comment down below if you don't mind or if you uh, if you feel like it and just let me know how you're finding this series obviously Obviously you can skip saying you're finding it long, because I know it's long, alright, I'm the one doing the videos, I know they're long, but uh, it's part of the territory I think when you're doing a novice, uh, a novice doing a job like this. Alright, that's enough for today, that's enough for this video. Until that next video comes, especially in this series, to get those rear brakes done, until that video happens, I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy. So take care of each other and peace out.